For those of us not as steeped in this as you are, give us a sense of the overall situation because we have a certain amount of electromagnetic spectrum. You license it out. What are the, in, the increased or the new demands that are coming your way now? It feels like almost every day. That's right. I mean, most of us have wireless phones and we're relying on them like never before. I mean, we download our lives into them. We can't imagine what it would be like not to be connected at almost all times. But all of those activities, they have consequences for our spectrum and our airwaves. You see, the airwaves all around us are some invisible infrastructure, and it's really important that we zone them in a way that we can power our phones and also power the next generation of wireless activities known as 5G. There's gonna be a lot more demand on our airwaves. We're gonna to have to be a lot smarter about how we zone those airwaves and make them available for people who want to use them. So take one story that really hit the Bloomberg within the last 24 hours or so is Intelsat and an allocation of C-band. Uh, as I understand, I want you to correct me where I go wrong. They thought that maybe they could have a private negotiation where they'd sell the Spectrum. And now the commission, I believe, has decided, no, it's got to be a public auction to look competitive. And Intelsat's stock went down on the news. What was that about? Well, what's happening is as we move to 5G, we are going to need more airwaves to power that next generation of wireless services. And some of those airwaves are in a really sweet spot known as mid-band airwaves. And that C-band you're talking about is right there. But over time, the FCC allocated those airwaves to a lot of satellite services. And we may have, in fact, offered so much of those airwaves to satellite services that they could return some of them now and make them available for new terrestrial uses for wireless. And that's what's at issue here. What's the best way to make that happen? For a while, the FCC was exploring a private sale of those airwaves. But increasingly, it has started to look legally complicated, hard to do, and Capitol Hill has been involved and suggested that we should do this through a public auction. As a result, the FCC chairman has announced that he would prefer a public auction next year and we are going to work with folks on Capitol Hill to see if we can do just that. Okay, turn to one other dispute that came up within the last two or three weeks, and that's the six gigahertz dispute, as I understand it, which appears to be Wi-Fi on the one hand, companies like Broadcom on the one hand, versus utilities who say they really need that spectrum for emergency communication. What is that dispute about? Yeah, you know, our airwaves, again, are getting complicated, and when you have an existing use and you propose new uses, there tends to be some friction, and you're seeing that here. Unlicensed spectrum or Wi-Fi is a really important part of our economy. So we're looking for places to grow Wi-Fi. And the six gigahertz band is definitely one of the places we'd like to do it because it's adjacent to existing unlicensed spectrum used for Wi-Fi. There are, however, utilities that rely on that band. So we're gonna have to figure out how we might be able to do both more unlicensed and Wi-Fi along with protect those in utility activities from unreasonable interference. So the FCC started a proceeding on that, but it is um, admittedly a heated one. We're still having discussions about it. And we're also looking at other places for Wi-Fi to go, including the 5.9 gigahertz band, which is just nearby. We're talking with FCC Commissioner Jessica Rosenworcel. Give us a sense about the extent to which partisan politics enters into this. We have both Republicans and Democrats who are commissioners on the FCC. President Trump has said it is a priority for the country to go into 5G. How much of this is a Republican-Democrat issue? How much of it is the Republicans and Democrats basically united on the goal of advancing 5G as fast as we can? Oh, I think you've got it. We're united on the goal. We want the United States to lead when it comes to this next generation of wireless technology. But I think when it comes to tactics, we might differ. I'm the senior Democrat at the agency, and I think when I look at the administration right now, we don't have a master plan for 5G service. And in fact, you saw leadership from the Senate, right, the National Security Advisor in the White House just this week, and say, we need a master plan when it comes to 5G. We don't have one. We've got the FCC fighting with the Department of Commerce over airwaves, fighting with the Department of Transportation over airwaves. And we've got the president tweeting out that he's asked Tim Cook for assistance with 5G. This is not a master plan, and we need one. Other economies around the world are making strides, and we don't want to fall behind. So what are the prospects for that, a so-called czar, as they call them in Washington, a czar for 5G? Yeah. There's been calls, for example, on election security. We should have a czar for that. But is there any prospect that we actually would get someone who would centralize this, bring all the different agencies and constituents together, and have a master plan for 5G? Well, you know, that sounds like a good idea to me. I certainly hope we do that. 
I think we need a master plan when it comes to thinking about 5G technology and artificial intelligence. Other big countries around the world have them. We don't. And the United States is at serious risk of falling behind in this next digital revolution. And I think some long-term planning is a good place to start.